just wanted to share something I thought might encourage the body of Christ. Um, I work at Belk, and the other day, the Lord's just really been speaking prophetically to me about the time and the season that we're in. You know, He can use anything. And so, I had my first customer of the day. Um, I was helping her, and she's very kind, this beautiful African-American woman. And when I was done helping her, I said, ma'am, what is your name? She said, my name is Miracles. And she said, what is your name? I said, my name is Karen Bauman. And she said, can you please write your name down and give it to me? She said, where do you go to church? And I said, I go to church at Global River. And with that, she was gone. So then, at the end of the day, I'm just excited, I'm sorry. <laughs> I went to get into my car. And my car was completely dead. And I'm like, oh, you don't know I didn't leave the lights on in my car. What's going on with my car? And um, it, it just wouldn't start. So I went back into mall security. And I said, do you have jumper cables? Because my car is dead. And so they called mall security. And they came out. Well, it was this, I don't know his background. But he was this really nice looking man. And he was some he was ethnic. He wasn't Caucasian. I'm sorry. I don't know where he was from, but anyhow, he, he jump-started my car, and um, as it turned out, the battery had overheated and cracked. He says, ma'am, you need a new battery, but the car was able to jump-start to get me home. I said, what is your name? He said, my name is Angel. So I knew the Lord was saying, pay attention, Karen. It's a prophetic word that right now what I'm doing, it's a time of miracles and the time of heat and the time of pressure and the time of affliction. Watch the miracles that I'm about to do. You have more angelic help than you've ever known before. There is a release of angelic help right now because the Lord said, I've got your back, daughter. No matter what you're going through, I've got the church's back. Let me, uh, let me add something to that. You can have a seat because we're going to have our dancers come in a moment. But about 10 o'clock last night, I go out and I walk the dog in our backyard. And our son Daniel had given us a pond. And I would, had refilled it the other day in the back and had the pump running. And, and I'd worked all around that pond. And I, I noticed there's this concrete angel. It's about, it's got to be two and a half feet tall. The thing weighs, it's got to weigh 40 pounds. And uh, I noticed it, it, was, it was standing just opposite the walkway of the pond. And I said, where has that been? It's, so I went in the house. I dragged my wife out. I said, that angel was not there. I don't know where it's been. Did somebody carry it off? So she called Sarah to find out if she'd carried it off. I don't know. But I'm telling you, there was this revelation that that angel that I didn't recognize was there before. It either stayed there the whole time or it wandered off and it came back. I can't tell you. But I do know that there is this revelation. When Jesus was in a really hard place in the Garden of Gethsemane and he prayed, Father, take this cup from me. Three times he asked his father. And then he surrendered his will and he said, not my will, yours be done. And it says at that moment, the father sent an angel to strengthen him for the journey that he had to make. So there's something about the angelic. It's not weird. It's, it's all over the scriptures. It appeared to Mary. It appeared to Joseph. So, Lord, we thank you right now, Father, for your assistance in all of this that we're walking through. And we bless your time. Lord, we ask that you would continue to heal us physically and spiritually and emotionally. In your great name, you'll get the glory. Amen. Spirit and Truth has a dance for us. I didn't know we were doing a dance when I was out, Pastor Michael, who's now in South Carolina, sharing this morning. And so I'm sure it's going to be good. Praise God.
They say sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. And right now, right now I'm losing bad. I've stood on this stage night after night, reminding the broken it'll be all right. But right now, oh right now I just can't. It's easy to sing when there's nothing to bring. What will I say when I'm held to the flame like I am right now? I know you're able and I know you can Save through the fire with your mighty hand But even if you don't My hope is for you alone They say it yeah, takes a little faith to move a mountain well, good thing a little faith is all I have right now God when you choose to leave mountains unmovable oh give me the strength to be able to sing When you hear the message later, that song will, God just has a way of orchestrating all these things. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Children, why don't you come on up and Miss Laura. Good morning. Good morning. Oh. So, Lord Jesus, 
Father, we just thank you for each and every child here this morning. And bless those that are out of town, seeing family on vacation, God. Lord, we just pray that you just loose creativity and their imaginations and open their hearts and their eyes and their ears to see you and receive you this morning. God, we just thank you for this season of jubilee, Father God, and joy. Lord, just fill up their cups and run it over. We just give you all praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all here today. Who's feeling a little groggy with daylight savings time? Anyone? I think I got about five and a half hours of sleep, so I'm all set for my Sunday afternoon nap. I'm going to catch up. So I'm Lisa. I have a few announcements to make. The first announcement is that the Kingdom Men will meet tomorrow night, and you're going to go on an outreach. So come to the church at 630. Food will be provided, and then you'll drive together to the outreach. So that's tomorrow night at 630. And then the ladies are going to meet Tuesday night back in the cafe at 630 p.m., and I'm going to be sharing. And I'm so excited because the Lord has given me just a message that, that makes my insides excited. And probably about three months ago, I think, um, Pastor Michael spoke about self-medicating. And I noticed that the sanctuary, everyone got really quiet because we all have areas where we self-medicate our brokenness. It might be entertainment or social media or sugar or being a workaholic. There are all kinds of ways we self-medicate. And so my message is about taking those band-aids that we put on our brokenness where we self-medicate and how Jesus calms. I'm teaching from Isaiah 61. He comes to comfort where we're grieving. He comes to deliver where we're captive. He comes to heal where we're brokenhearted. So it's from band-aids to brokenness. It's an ultimate makeover. So I want to invite all the ladies to come. There'll be snacks, fellowship. Um, Jan Ricky's in charge if you have any questions. So join us Tuesday night. And then Wednesday night, Randy Clark's team from Global Awakening will be here to, to host a night of healing. And so we've been singing this morning about the Lord um, being great and glorious, and he's a God of miracles, and he is a miracle worker. So we want to invite you to come at 6.30 p.m., excuse me. And if you need healing in your body, if you have family members, neighbors, friends that need healing, bring them with you and come with expectation that he's a miracle worker. So that's going to be Wednesday night at 630. And then Friday night we have our burn, which is our night of worship and prayer, intercession for our city. And it's a time where we all come together from across the city to pray. And this Friday night we're having our Spirit and Truth Dance team collaborating with the Lord's Church to bring a dance. So that's right here, Friday night, 7 p.m. Oh, Hannah, can you bring my prop? Hannah, can you bring my prop? The peanut butter, honey. I forgot my prop, and I love a prop. Thank you, Vanna. <laughs> Vanna, Hannah. So we are going to be having a food drive um, for the food bank for March 22nd. We need you to bring food peanut butter, jelly, cereal, pasta, canned meat. We need you to bring food so that we can give to those in our community who are needy. So you can bring the food here to the sanctuary on Wednesday night, Sunday morning. There's a purple bin out in the lobby. You can put it there. During the week, you can take it to the admin building, but we need you, and we need the body to come together so we can feed our city. Jesus took five loaves and two fish and multiplied it, and they all ate and were satisfied, and there were, there were baskets left over. So we need to do that. Please bring your five loaves and your two fish. Put a reminder in your phone, so do it now so you won't forget. And lastly, we'll be having a Good Friday service on Friday, March 30th, right here in the sanctuary at 6 p.m., and Pastor Tom's going to share, and we're going to worship together and just prepare our hearts to celebrate our risen Savior. Amen? Amen. So that's all the announcements. I'd like to welcome any first-time guests that we have with us today. If you're in these two sections and you're a first-timer, if you'll just very bravely lift up your hand. Back there, thank you. And back here, thank you. We're so glad that you're with us today. We won't follow you home, but we do want to give you a little gift. 
and there's a card inside, if you'll just fill that out. And we have offering boxes that used to be in the back, two in the front and one in the back, if you'll just put the card in the wooden boxes, and we thank you for that. And how about over in these sections? Do we have any first-time guests with us today right there? Thank you so much. Anyone else that I missed? Okay, right. If you'll just lift your hand so she can see you one more time. Thank you, sweetie. All right. Well, I think that that's it for me, and thank you so much. Morning. Um, the outreach reach that they were talking about actually is uh, a, a new business that I'm working with, and it's on Market Street. And as an old Episcopalian, we used to do a lot of blessings of uh, on properties and homes and businesses. Um, I am excited about it because I've been looking for something that gives me more time to go to Kingdom Men and some other things. So this job has given me some opportunities. But Market Street and where it's located is probably. A little, little rough, but we've had some really good respondents. I'm not here to sell my business to anybody. so I'm not, But I will tell you that everything that I do, I want to prosper. If I, everything I put my hands to, if I'm like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water, I want this to come and flow. But I don't want to do it from the business aspect. I want it to be a light on Market Street. So I'm asking for men, kingdom men specifically, but anyone else that would come, if you would bring a scripture and holy oil. I want to bless this building to the point that when people walk by, there's a lot of traffic that some people would want on their property, but I want them to come and feel the light of Christ, the love of Christ. So I'm just asking for your presence tomorrow. Uh, I, I think the food usually is the draw, but I'm just asking that you come and you understand that this is not for the business to prosper, even though it's the side note. The real one is to bless a business so that when people see this business, they see something unique. That's all. And it's Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Thank you. Test, test. So 630 in the great room, admin building. Is that right? Yeah. And you're going to have filet mignon there? Yeah. That. I'm, in, I'm in church, but I can't lie. <laughs> all right. Praise God. Well, I want to pray a blessing over our tithes and offerings this morning. If you'd stand with me, um, if you have a chance to come and we want to just honor the Lord with all that he has given to us. So thank you, Lord. Thank you that you give us life, breath. Lord, I thank you this morning that when I opened my eyes, the words that popped out of my mouth were, I praise you, Father, I praise you, Son, and I love you, Holy Spirit. The revelation of the goodness of God that we have another day and the promise. So God, would you take now gifts of our hearts first. We've come here to worship you this morning. We also desire, Lord, we would have these tangible gifts that would reach out and touch your people, advance your kingdom. Lord, all those places we have put our hands to as a body of Christ, to the Christian radio, the airwaves that get flooded, and the testimony from Jim Stevens and the things that I hear on the radio of those that turn on and let their children listen. And Lord, we've already heard the testimonies from Cynthia Dare and their representatives of the children at Lifeline Pregnancy that have been saved. The parents, the young women who went in there frightful and they saw an ultrasound. And there's children alive today in this city because of the gifts given. For Mayaz, the Christian organization in Jerusalem, in uh, Tel Aviv, that stands for Christ, for our missionaries overseas in Mozambique and in Costa Rica, and Nepal, India. Even this week, God, the monies that was able to provide one of our 10th graders in Nepal had an, an emergency appendectomy. God, you provided. The young lady from India who had dengue fever, who needed blood transfusions. You saved her life. Many have died in that country. And, and so it goes on and on. The young lady years ago who had her leg amputated from the knee down, who now honors God and lives. 
the testimonies of the goodness of God from people in the United States whom they'll never meet this side of heaven probably. You're a God who's grace and mercy. So we want to honor you this morning, God. We give back to you and we thank you and ask that you transform this to the advancing of your kingdom. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I guess this group, remember to set your clocks forward, amen? <laughs> I do it last night at like 7 o'clock because I know I'll forget it. So praise God. Thank you, Lord. Pray for our team that's in Greenville, South Carolina this morning and that they'll just be a blessing, a blessing to the church there and all that God is doing among us. I've titled uh, the message this morning. Actually, some of you may remember if you were here December 31st, the last day of the year of last year, I, I preached a message on what I believed was going to be the, the theme for this particular year for the body of Christ at Global River. And there were two major scriptures. The first one I shared, which titled the message, I have the December 31st, it says, year 2018, that we were to love God and love people, walk in the Spirit. And the verse was Ezekiel 1.12 which is the wheel within a wheel. It had been prophesied over me back in, two, I think it was 2003. I have it marked in my Bible. A lady came up to me, said she heard the audible voice of God that um, we were to be that people who would walk within the wheel within a wheel and move in all directions as the Holy Spirit directed us, and we would never have to turn around. There would be all these different ministries. Um, and then the last scripture then, the bottom of that I shared was that of Hosea, Chapter 2, verse 15, it says, He transforms the valley of trouble into a gateway of hope. That scripture has become more real and more relevant. It'd be four weeks tomorrow, my, our son Daniel was murdered. And we've been in this transformation place. And I know that he transfer, transforms us in the situations when we walk through the valley of trouble into a gateway of hope. I want to share with you this morning um, what I believe, and I've had several confirmations. In fact, um, Bill Curry drove in before work today. I was telling Tammy, he said, I got to see you before I, I go in. And he talked about grace in the midst of our storms. And then Lisa, this morning, same thing, it was grace, grace, I wanted to share with you one. And so, and then not knowing the song this morning that would be sung, I didn't even know we were doing a, a dance, actually, the, even if he doesn't, we will still praise him. There's this situation in life, I want to try to unpack what I believe the Lord is, and bring revelation to myself and to my wife and our family. First, I don't know if any of you saw last night uh, the president. He was in Pennsylvania doing his thing. And, uh, man, it was, I don't know, there were 20,000 some odd in the stadium. He's, he was campaigning, and he's, he was in it, right? And uh, the pundits at the end, the negatives were saying, well, you know, he was a, a reality show host, so, yeah, he can entertain people. And I just felt that there was this question I had this morning for us. Who is the ultimate reality? Who is he? In fact, Paul says in Colossians that set your sights on the reality of heaven where your life is really held. So to go through life, and this is the thing, I've prayed with people on their deathbed, those who renounced God, those who came to that place at the last second, of accepting Christ, 
But I believe to have lived and never come to the revelation of truth is the ultimate tragedy. To live your life, to live my life, to live through all of the experience and never come to the ultimate reality of who God is, is such a tragic, sad experience. Now, why does God allow us to go through these trials and tribulations of life? In fact, this morning in pre-service prayer, Jonathan Sellers read out of Psalm 34. I'm, I'm going to ask you to open with me, if you will. Let's start in 1 Samuel chapter 17. The book of Samuel, the first book of Samuel in chapter 17 Most of you could probably recite this story. We, we tell it over and over again about David and Goliath. But the reality of this one hit me this morning. David, who was known as a man after God's heart. Here the pages turn. So let me just continue. If you... Think about life and all the trials and tribulations that we go through. God is preparing us, but greater than the preparation, I believe, is the revelation of who He is. And so, if we can get a handle on, as believers, that God parents us differently than we might parent our children, I try to prevent or keep my children and grandchildren from pain. But God often allows us to walk through pain because we get revelation in the midst of our pain. You've heard them probably say that uh, experience is the greatest teacher. You ever heard that one? When you were learning how to drive, first you read the book. You got to learn about all of the signs and all of the things you can't do when you stop, when you go. But you still got to get behind the wheel. You can read about driving on ice, but if you've ever driven in the north country and hit ice... There's an experiential part of this that when, uh, if you've seen the movie Sully, the one where the airline pilot lands the U.S. airline, he, there's a bird strike, a full plane load of people in New York City. He either crashes that plane into the buildings in New York City or he finds a place quickly to land this in the river. And in all of his experience, he was the pilot who had trained on all of these casualty events and he lands that plane without the loss of life experience. When I was in submarine training, it's one thing to read about starting up a reactor plant, but when you're several hundred feet below the ocean and there's a flooding event or a fire event and the reactor scrams and you've lost propulsion and you've got a few minutes to get this thing turned around and blow ballast or you die, that's where experience comes in. And people who've experienced these things, to have those people in that midst of us who have had experience in life, and that's exactly what God wants to do in all of the trials and tribulations. You see, we look at these things, keep me from it, God, keep me from it. But even if you don't, that's that place where God says, will you trust me in the storm? Will you trust me in this storm? I want you to look at that second, uh, 1 Samuel 17. David shows up to bring lunch to his brothers and Goliath is tormenting the armies of the living God. And there's nobody in the mix that will go after Goliath. So David comes and he says in verse 32, 1 Samuel 32, David goes to Saul, the king, and he says, here's the little shepherd boy bringing the lunch. Um, David says to Saul, I'll go fight him. Don't worry about the Philistine. Saul's response is in 33, says, don't be ridiculous, Paul replies. There's no way you can fight him. He, it's impossible. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. David persists. I've been taking care of my father's sheep and the goats. You might say, well, what does that have to do with anything? When a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, or a lion comes I go after it with my club, and I rescue the lamb from his mouth. If the man 
If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and I club it to death. 